I don't think the gender should be a barrier, but I also don't think it should be a focus. Spokane is about to have its first female fire chief in the history of the department, and she is taking it all in stride. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Julie Oberg was appointed today, but has been serving as the interim chief for the last several months. Originally, she said she didn't want the chief job, but today she told Krem 2's Whitney Ward why she changed her mind. We are here to serve the community and we couldn't be more proud to do that. I couldn't be more proud of the team that, that now I get the honor of, of just being, being at the forefront of. And uh, without that team, I couldn't do it. What does it mean to you to be the first female chief? Oh, wow. Um, you know, so I'm honored to be recognized as the first female uh, for the fire chief in Spokane. So um, as firefighters, you know, we our, our, our duty is to serve and protect. And it's about the skills, the experience that we bring. So I really want the focus while I'm proud and I'm very honored to represent uh, women in the fire service. I want the focus not to be on the gender, but on the important work that we have ahead of us. You did mention that you were looking forward to adapting and evolving, recognizing that the needs of the community are changing. So what do you mean by that? And what do you see changing? We're called the fire department and fighting fire is, is really, it's a very important part of what we do, but it's one small part. So really making sure that um, we are focused on not only firefighting, but prevention, the emergency medical part, the um, the mental health part that we can play a role in. Um, so it's it's making sure that there is an understanding out there in the community of we show up in a in a big fire truck, but we bring so many solutions with us on that fire truck. So you had originally said that you did not want to pursue the chief position when you agreed to serve in the interim role. So what made you change your mind? Um, well, I'll say Mayor Brown's very compelling um, <laughs> and she's doing some great work. So it's uh, it's pretty exciting to, to remain a part of her team. And um, it's pretty exciting to remain a part of the team that uh, that we have here at the at the fire department. So we have some just uh, some really talented people that want to do some good work for the community and being able to be on that team and help lead that team uh, is a compelling reason to stick around. Spokane City Council is expected to make Oberg's appointment final coming up on April 22nd. All right, switching gears to talk weather. It may not look a whole lot nicer outside, but the temperatures say otherwise. Let's get straight over to meteorologist Michelle Boss for more on what we can expect in the hours and days to come. Michelle? Yeah, that's right. Even though we're talking about some showers and some windy weather, we are bringing some milder air into the area. So temperatures were below average today, only in the lower 50s. But things are looking up and temperatures are expected to warm as early as tomorrow. Well, as early as tonight, even satellite and radar showing precipitation starting to increase across eastern Washington. We just had a few sprinkles. Uh, in some spots today, but we'll see a little bit more overnight and tomorrow, though, as we zoom into the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area, neither the Spokane nor Coeur d'Alene Airport have reported any measurable precipitation yet. But again, we should see some light amounts tonight and tomorrow. But temperature wise, with the thick cloud cover, we don't expect temperatures to get too chilly tonight. In fact, they'll bottom out in the lower 40s. We're still at 48 degrees right now in Spokane after topping out at 52 and still some 40s and 50s across the region. So chance of showers overnight, otherwise cloudy skies, lows again. Again, very mild in the 40s. Some scattered showers for tomorrow. The high of 58 will also be in the upper 50s Wednesday and then 60s return by Thursday. Looking forward to that, Michelle. Thank you very much. Happening tomorrow, a judge is expected to hand down a ruling in the case of Kevin Boot. A Spokane man is convicted of a murder that he committed back in 1994, but he's hoping to be resentenced. Boot has already served nearly 30 years in prison for killing Felicia Reese. He was 17 at the time of the murder. Then a 2012 U.S. Supreme Court ruling determined a juvenile couldn't be sentenced to life without parole. Boot is now seeking a 30-year sentence with credit for time served, meaning his time in prison would be almost over. New tonight, a man was arrested over the weekend for allegedly trying to provide support to ISIS and for planning to attack several churches. The U.S. Attorney's Office says 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio of Coeur d'Alene was arrested Saturday. Court documents claim he pledged his allegiance to ISIS and intended to attack people at churches in Coeur d'Alene in Sunday in the group's name. If he is convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison. 
And now to our night meet with a quick look at today's top stories. The inmate who escaped from custody after being treated for self-inflicted wounds at a Boise hospital last month was back in court today. Skyler Mead is charged with escape by a convicted felon. In today's preliminary hearing, the judge list listened to three witnesses, including a detective with the Boise Police Department. He spoke about what he saw in security camera footage when Mead and his accomplice later identified as Nicholas Umfenauer ambushed corrections officers and got away. He's being held on a $2 million bond. His arraignment is set for April 17th. Umfenauer was scheduled for his preliminary hearing as well. However, that was moved back to April 29th. Meantime, Chad Daybell's murder trial continues this week. He is the Idaho man charged in the deaths of his first wife and two of his current wife's children. Today, the court announced a jury has been selected, 10 men and 8 women. Each side had 16 strikes where they could eliminate potential jurors until they got to that final number. Today, Larry Woodcock, the grandfather of J.J. Ballow, talked about the differences that he is expecting between Chad's trial and Lori's. It's going to be tough but I don't anticipate it being as rigorous, emotionally involved as it was with Laurie's trial. So I'm, I'm hoping that that comes to fruition with us. Opening statements are scheduled for Wednesday. The trial is expected to last eight to 10 weeks. Another construction project hit the ground running today. The Boone Avenue and Washington Street intersection near one Spokane Stadium is closed for the next two weeks. Drivers will need to use alternate routes instead. City crews are working to replace water and sewer pipes that are more than 100 years old. If you are heading to any events in that area at the podium or the arena, the city says to plan ahead and allow for extra travel time. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's Krem.com. In Northwest News tonight, a judge in Cowlitz County ruled Washington State's ban on the sale of high-capacity magazines is unconstitutional. Then shortly after, the state's Supreme Court issued a stay on that ruling, essentially putting it on hold until further court hearings. But gun rights advocates still call this a big win. Attorney General Bob Ferguson backed the law when it came through the Capitol. Today, he said the law is constitutional and he will continue to defend it. After years of fines and lawsuits over the state's failure to treat people with mental health issues, work is finally underway to expand the number of beds at Washington's largest mental health facility. It is a massive project. Twelve buildings are coming down to make space for the new facility at Western State Hospital. When the work is done in 2028, the state will have 350 more beds to handle patients convicted of crimes who are trying to have their competency restored to face trial. Over the past decade, the hospital lost its federal certification, but now the Department of Social and Health Services says this is a new facility as a fresh start. We hope that we'll start easing the problem. It's not an overnight change, but it's going to be just a process that we will go slowly, but that's the goal. One of the reasons the state was sued, the wait times for those who are arrested and needed mental evaluations. But now the state says once someone is arrested, they'll get competency reviews in less than 14 days. Well, this weekend, two Washington lawmakers shared that they are coming together to create what they call a landmark bill. It aims to protect data privacy. Grem 2's Cody Proctor spoke with Senator Maria Cantwell and U.S. Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers to find out what they hope it will accomplish. Washington's lawmakers, Senator Maria Cantwell and Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers, have one goal for their new data privacy bill, the American Privacy Rights Act. What it does is establish a, a uniform national data privacy rights for Americans. If passed, some of the things the bill would do is give consumers the right to control how tech companies such as Google, Meta, and TikTok use their personal data. For the first time ever, it would give users the right to opt out of certain data practices and the right to access and delete their data. We don't even know if our personal data might be shared or sold with, without our knowledge. You're, you will be notified in the future. We want consumers to have a right to say that how their data could be used and to stop it if they don't want that data sold to a third party. The bill would also preempt current state laws According to both lawmakers, data privacy has been a concern for several years, but the increased use of AI recently seems to be ringing alarms for Congress. That all of a sudden our colleagues who probably had been saying in the past, well, I don't know about a privacy bill, all of a sudden there was everybody uh, in Congress saying, oh my gosh, we need a privacy bill. We need a privacy 
Right now, the two legislators expect to introduce the bill in both the House and Senate in the next few weeks. As Cody Proctor reporting, there is some concern the bill won't pass by the time McMorris Rogers is finished with her term. She is not seeking re-election, but both legislators say they are optimistic they can get it done by then.